In the 1980s and 90s, the world came together to protect a common cause, the endangered whales. Whaling was a practice that benefited numerous communities around the world, but with the progress of the last century, the international community decided to stop the practice altogether. However, the Japanese never came to terms with the treaties and opted to continue their traditional lifestyles, much to the chagrin of environmentalists worldwide. A decade of epic maritime confrontations between the Japanese whaling fleet and the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society then followed, with some encounters escalating to highly dangerous levels. In 2014, the Dutch Bob Barker vessel and the Japanese Yushin Maru No. 3 whale catcher engaged in one of their infamous encounters, with the Japanese vessel unapologetically ramming the conservationist's boat. And it was all caught on camera. Open Confrontation On Sunday, February 2nd, 2014, the Japanese harpoon ship Yushin Maru No. 3 assaulted the Sea Shepherd vessel known as Bob Barker. Throughout the day, Yushin Maru No. 3 executed no less than 86 attacks on the environmentalists. Soon after, the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society released footage depicting the exact moment the whaling vessel instigated the collision and hit Bob Barker's starboard at high speed, damaging the conservation ship. Meanwhile, the Japanese Institute of Cetacean Research, which is behind the country's whaling fleet, also released footage of the collision, but did not include any context or additional visual documentation. Peter Hammerstedt, Bob Barker's captain, issued an official report to the Netherlands Shipping Inspectorate documenting the events in full detail. According to his statement, the attack was, quote, unprovoked, ruthless, and premeditated. Relentless Attacks The encounter lasted nine hours, with both parties giving in to the aggression. Shortly after midnight, the whalers approached the Sea Shepherd ships Bob Barker and Steve Irwin, encircling the pair and weaving through the vessels to disrupt their course. The whaling ships are considerably faster and more maneuverable than the environmentalists, and they crossed their bows and snared their propellers with 300-meter-long steel cables. The calculated midnight ambush aimed to oust Sea Shepherd from blocking the shipway of the Nushin Maru. The maneuver would prevent the factory ship from butchering and processing poached whales. Sea Shepherd Australia claims that, quote, the harpoon vessels crossed the bow of the Bob Barker and the Steve Irwin 41 and 45 times, respectively. The activists then launched three small boats to defend themselves against the ships and attempt to cut the trailing cables. The whaling crew responded by shooting projectiles at the small boats and firing water cannons to douse their determination. Still, the Sea Shepherd ships held their position for eight consecutive days. Conflict of interest. The 50 million square kilometer area around Antarctica is known as the Southern Ocean Whale Sanctuary, and it is protected by international agreements and the International Whaling Commission, or IWC, which banned all types of commercial whaling in 1994. Still, some countries opposed the arrangement from the start. A decade later, Japan proposed to remove the sanctuary, but failed to reach the required majority. In response, the country exploited a legal loophole, claiming to hunt for whales for scientific research under the ICR. However, several conservation groups, especially the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, argued that scientific activity was a veil to cover commercial operations, as whale meat is sold in Japanese markets. Likewise, the Japanese whaling fleet operates in violation of the 1986 Global Moratorium on Commercial Whaling, and many scientists around the world agree that Japanese whaling programs fail to qualify as credible science. In 2002, 21 scientists published an open letter to the Japanese government, accusing them of, quote, using the pretense of scientific research to evade its commitments to the world community. Still, Sea Shepherd took the matter into its own hands and engaged in yearly hunts to interrupt or cut short whaling activities in the protected area. But their methods have been known as constituting piracy or even terrorism, not to mention illegal harassment of the ICR fleet. 
On the other hand, critics of the ICR point out that scientific advances have enabled the use of non-lethal techniques for cetacean research purposes, like biopsies of analysis of DNA samples from feces. The environmentalists maintain that they have valid arguments to support their position, but their methods have raised eyebrows across the globe and lost them many potential allies. It is believed they could even cost them the battle itself. Limits A few months after the 2014 encounter, the International Court of Justice had Japan's whaling permits for their JARPA-2 platform revoked agreeing with the Australian government that the number of Japanese research publications was not even proportional to the number of whales taken for supposed scientific purposes. At the instigation of international pressure and with no solid scientific basis, Japan was forced to halt its whale poaching operations. Initially, the country set out to catch over 900 mink whales, 50 humpbacks, and 50 fins every year. But most seasons, they did not reach their quotas due to actions by groups like Sea Shepherd. Hammerstedt once bragged that, quote, One year we stopped Japan getting all but 10% of its quota. Their ships were nearly empty when they got back home. But after the ICJ decision, the Japanese could only fish 330 minks and no humpbacks or fin whales. Furthermore, their approach would significantly change. They doubled their area making it extremely difficult for the conservationists to even find the hunters, let alone block their activities. But perhaps more importantly, the Japanese stepped up their game, providing military tracking hardware to the fleet. Sea Shepherd's founder, Paul Watson, expressed, quote, Essentially, they can see exactly where we are, but we still only have a rough idea of their position. This is all part of the vast subsidy provided by the Japanese government for their whales. And to top that, they have also made it an act of terrorism for anybody to approach within 500 meters of a whaling vessel. They're putting up a lot of muscle against us. In consequence, the ecologist group was dissuaded from trying to conduct a blockade in late 2017 and didn't even send a vessel. Watson reckoned, quote, We have an obligation to our supporters that if we cannot be successful in intervening directly, then it would not make sense to send a vessel. Outdone. According to Watson, the organization's actions were a significant factor behind Japan's decision to lower its quota and better conform to global standards. Still, the group was forced to take a step back after their significant victory. The Japanese also increased the use of military surveillance satellites for their whaling fleet and issued new anti-terrorism legislation with the specific purpose of thwarting the organization's efforts. This action led to the Japanese denouncing the presence of eco-activist vessels near whalers as a terrorist offense during the 2020 Olympics. Irremediably, the combined measures doomed Sea Shepherd's operations in Antarctica, and Watson was forced to acknowledge that his group of activists, however well-intentioned, could not stop the more robust whaling fleet with mere flower bombs. Eventually, the activists pondered that they could not compete with military-grade technology. Still, their efforts were not at all useless. As Captain Hammerstedt said, quote, We were active in the Southern Ocean for 10 years and saved more than 6,000 whales. We also have many other critically important campaigns to run elsewhere in the world. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a like. And don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for more exciting history inspired content. Also, go ahead and hit the bell icon so you never miss out on one of our stories. And stay tuned.